Hi again guys and today I'm representing the team as many of you have been with the liveries on Gran Turismo Sport so that's very cool I'm glad you guys are enjoying those liveries I'm dropping a number of new ones of course over the coming days and weeks so I think I'm going to release one later today actually for another vehicle now as far as these unboxing videos go usually it's one car per episode and I was expecting this one to be I was hoping that the car would get delivered today but I've actually ended up getting two cars delivered today so this will be a double unboxing they're both american cars they're both very much involved in the racing world but one is for the street and one is a pure race car so let's get straight to it first of all then we have this one and it's so hard not to completely open these before i get them out of the box because this one is out of the box of course but not totally so this one is a car which i saw a while back on ebay but i wasn't certain about buying it because some of them look a bit iffy as far as quality whereas this one is made by i believe it was hot wheels that i chose to go for and although hot wheels are predominantly known for making you know little diddy cars they actually make really good 118 scale models my tvr speed 12 uh, my jaguar f1 car the r1 a number of others were made by hot wheels so they actually do make really good cars but this one in particular is Of course, a very nice looking Celine S7. To be completely honest, I probably wouldn't have chosen orange as my go-to colour. But the reason why I did opt to go for it anyway is because I don't have any of these like reddish, tangerine-ish, orange coloured vehicles already. And I do like to keep the colours varied. My first choice would have probably been blue for this one like laser blue and then the second choice would have been probably red like cherry red then probably yellow so orange would be <laughs> pretty actually orange might be one of my last choices i'd probably choose orange just just below silver maybe but uh still it's a it's a nice looking model that's for sure the doors i believe do open yep they do and they look very nice when doing so So yeah, there you go. Nice gullwing. Oh, scared myself. <laughs> nice uh, gullwing door action. Forget it. Nice gullwing door action on that. Very nicely detailed interior. You can just about see that from there. I don't believe the engine bay opens. No, it doesn't. It's got functional steering. Obviously, it's on this plaque, but I never keep them on the plaques anyway. Um. So, if you bear with me for one second, I will remove it. Kermit the Fable! Kermit the Frog! 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 Any days later, he finally finished unscrewing the car. So there's the bottom. Classic flat floor style, as you'd expect. I believe the steering on this one does work. Yep, it does indeed. Pretty nice. And I realised while I was unscrewing the car as well that the engine bay does in fact open. Although, it doesn't really feel like it was necessary for that to happen. It's not exactly like there's much to see in there. If it was the twin turbo then there would be. It'd have the two huge pipes coming up. But uh, yeah, it looks, looks pretty sweet, I think. Selena 7 is one that I've wanted for a while. Um, I'm always on the lookout for new, uh, less obvious choices of model car. Um, I managed to find a Shizetta V16T, which is, of course, my favourite car. But they are expensive, man. Real expensive. And uh, yeah, pretty happy with that one. Nice quality to it. It's going to go in well with my supercar selection. So, on to the next one. And the next model car is also a Hot Wheels model, but this one came in the original packaging, it's unopened. Not exactly mint condition, I believe it has been uh, out of the package actually. I mean, unopened by me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure somebody else has opened it because the car itself is dusty. And this one uh, is an even less obvious choice than a Selena 7 
because as far as supercars go or model cars, a Selina 7 is it's on the list. It would be pretty low on the list as far as obvious choices go, but it would be on there. This one is a Le Mans car, a prototype, an LMP900, I believe. And it's actually one of my favourite LMP900s. I don't care about resale value. <laughs> so we have the engine bay. If you had a fast eye, you had a little bit of a clue then. But to get more specifically to the car itself, I can take these sides off. And here, it is. One, one of my favourite LMPs. Let's put the engine bay back on. I believe it just slots back on. Yep, yeah, there we go. The Cadillac North Star powered LMP car. There are actually there are actually a couple of different generations of the Cadillac LMP for those who are unfamiliar with it. My favourite version, because this is my favourite LMP, my favourite modern LMP car, um, wasn't very successful as far as I can remember. It certainly didn't win the Lamar, that's for sure. But um, I just think it's so cool when you have a company that you aren't expecting to make a Lamar car. To me, this is like when. Uh, Bentley makes a Le Mans car like the Speed 8. With Bentley there is a precedent there because they used to be in the Le Mans. With Cadillac not so much because although they are in motorsport, in in the Le Mans they're not really a name that's thought of that much. They have been in the Le Mans, like the Il Mostro, I think it was from way back in the day, that weird looking car. I think that was either a Cadillac or Cadillac powered, but in LMP times it's not a car that you'd expect to show up. It would be like Rolls-Royce, for instance, making an LMP car, or Buick <laughs> making an LMP car. You just wouldn't expect a company like that to do it, or a Pagani. And how cool would that be? A Pagani LMP car. So yeah, it looks pretty sweet. There are two generations of this one. One of them has a facelifted front end. You can see the differences on Google. I personally prefer that one. I think that's the 2002. I'm not sure what model year this is. It might be... Um, it might be somewhere between 99 and 2001. I think this one is some something like that. Um, yeah, it looks pretty nice, I think. Get some views of it instead of just yakking. There are a couple of different colour options for this one on eBay. There are silver and also there are black. I wanted to get a black one, to be honest. But... Um, but the black ones were in America, and the postage was a lot more expensive. See the mechanicals there? Pretty nice fat tyres on the back. Nice detail. Certainly better engine detail than the Celine, that's for sure. But yeah, pretty, pretty sweet. See if we can get this engine bay back on. Yep, there you go. Easy once you know. So I'll get that one off of the plaque in its own due time. And uh, yeah, so that's the two for today. As I said, I have actually ordered some more. So um, over the coming days, maybe the oh, over the next two weeks, maybe, I'm going to be having uh, a fair few um, exotic car unboxings. And a couple of them in particular are very special. One of them in particular, which I'm waiting for delivery from, from Germany which is the most expensive model car I've ever bought and probably ever will buy. And anyone who knows me knows that it's the Holy Grail as far as model cars go. So yeah, I'm looking forward to unboxing that one. But yeah, pretty sweet for this one. Very happy with both, especially the Cadillac, but I already knew that I'd like the Cadillac more. But yeah, Selena 7, pretty nice choice as well. So funny thing happened, just after I'd finished unboxing the two cars, I actually had another delivery comes. So I have a rough idea of what this one's going to be, but I figured if I'm already doing two in one video, I might as well just do all three. 
So let's see which model this one is. So, as I said, I think I've got a pretty good idea of uh, which model. Yes, it is indeed the model that I thought it was. And this one, this one I'm real happy with. <clears throat> because this one is very, very special. This is one of those cars which, and I'm sure this is the case for you guys as well, there are certain cars which I absolutely love, but I find it strangely easy to forget how much I love a certain car. For instance, uh, the Morgan Aero 8 for me. I love the Morgan Aero 8, but I often forget that I love the Morgan Aero 8. It's just one of those vehicles which it's easy to forget that I like it. I don't know if you guys have cars like that for you, but for me, stuff like the Adonis is one of those as well, or the Cavini C6W. So this is an auto art model. And it's, I believe, brand new, and it is a fantastic looking model, if I don't say so myself. Managed to get this one a little bit cheaper from the seller, through bartering. Might have to do a bit of a cut to get it out of its uh, plastic packaging. But, let's reveal what this one is. wheels come off. <laughs> it is, of course, oops, a Panos Esperante, aka the GTR1 road car, in purple, of course, which is a pretty rare colour for this model. So, I'll do a quick jump cut, get the wheel back on, get the car... Uh, get the car off the plaque and then go from there. So I've now got it out of the box fully off of the frame. It does look like a brand new model. I believe it is brand new. The wheel coming off wasn't an issue thankfully they just clip on clip off. It's got this gorgeous purplish green pearlescent or color shift kind of iridescent paint. And this is, as I said just now, it's one of those cars which I love. In fact, I, I do think that the Panos GTR1 road car might even be my absolute favourite of all of the GT1 road-going Le Mans cars. Even more than a CLK GTR or an Elise GT1 or a 911 GT1, I like the Panos even more. Because as I've mentioned on the channel before, Panos is my favourite racing team. I love every car that they've ever made. And I think it's just such a cool looking car. It's uh, got some nice posability on it, the doors, and look at that interior, if you can get a good shot of that. Love the purple with contrast and light colours on the inside. Love the door operation as well. The gold wheels are nice. Inside the wheel wells, you can just about see you've got a bit of gold in there as well. Yeah, I just love, I just love the car, and I don't know if they still are, but for a while at least, Panos were actually allowing people to buy these again within the last couple of years they would be built to order and they were like six hundred and fifty thousand dollars i actually have a, a screenshot of that price because uh, it seemed like such a special occasion to have a car like this available such a fantastic looking car i believe this is the first auto art model that i've bought and uh it's it's a pretty fantastic looking car actually you can get them in full gold as well and I wouldn't have minded that, but at the same time it was gold with gold wheels, and I'm not a huge fan of that. If it was gold with black wheels or gold with silver, then I might have gone for that, but uh, double gold is just a little bit too much for me. Now, as far as I'm aware, I believe that you can also take both the front and the back end of this one off. There are some small screws underneath. I'm not going to do that right now because I haven't got a, a, a screwdriver that's the right size. But uh, basically you've got the engine, of course, in the front. But mid front located back end you've got a can't recall what's under the back end but not very much back here but when you take off the front and the back it's very bare bones almost LMP style which makes sense for a GT1 car 
but yeah, I might uh, I might include a screenshot from uh, Google of this model so that you can see what it looks like without the bonnet and the boot. So yeah, very happy with this one. I've got to say this is one of my absolute favourites now of all of the models that I own, just because I love the car so much and the finish is so nice. The condition is really good as well as you'd hope it would be. So uh, yeah, as I mentioned earlier on in the video, I've got uh, a couple more of these arriving. So I hope you guys have enjoyed checking these out and if you are interested in getting model cars, these are 118 scale, as all of mine are, then uh, you don't have to pay ridiculous prices. Because often when you look at like model cars, you can think, oh, but they're so expensive, like 80 quid, 100 quid, 200, 300. I saw a Shelby Daytona Cobra on eBay for £1,500. And uh, I feel sorry for the person who buys that because, spoiler alert, I've got one right here. <laughs> <laughs> which certainly didn't cost 1500 in fact this one was less than 50 so uh, of course the quality is going to be different between the two but the quality on that's pretty great and it's not like that's a knockoff that was made by Shelby so maybe that was worth 1500 and I, <laughs> I just didn't know but uh, yeah pretty cool and um, yeah what I was saying about people who want to check out model cars is you don't need to pay ridiculous prices don't feel that this is something that you have to have a ridiculous amount of money for, because you really don't. You can get some amazing deals. This Celine was quite affordable. I believe this was a bid that I won. And that's when you can really get some bargains. When you find cars that are less obvious and people don't bid on them, then uh, you can get yourself a bargain, for sure. And uh, what I'd recommend doing is don't type in a specific car. Go onto eBay, especially on the desk desktop site. Click on Category, go down to Toys. Then just click search. Don't search anything, just click search. Don't type anything in. When it comes up with all the toys, then look on the left of the screen and you'll have die cast and model cars. Click on that, then it will bring up like 40 or 50,000 model cars. Then click into your filters, set your minimum or maximum price, and then you can just look through them all. You can find some really sweet stuff there. There are a ton of duplicates, of course, but uh, yeah, you can find some, some gems in there. And of course, you can select the size of model car that you want, and that's the way that I do it. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed checking these cars out. I certainly enjoy them and uh, I'm going to give them a place in my set as well. So that's it for this unboxing overall. And I'll see you guys next time. So for now, as always, thanks for watching.